Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if there's someone talking to you, please tell them to keep quiet now. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed. I'll be on TV. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very, very much indeed uh, for joining us here tonight. A very, very warm welcome to you. Uh, my name is Peter Doro. I'm going to be your program director. And I always joke that uh, we used to call ourselves Master of Ceremonies. Until I found out that in Zambia, Master of Ceremonies is someone who does circumcisions. <laughs> so... <laughs> so. I'll be your program director for the rest of this evening. Unless there's a desperate need, you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, a very, very good evening to you. Um, the protocols will be observed shortly, so I will just say in advance, thank you for protocols being observed. Um, but a warm welcome to you all on this year's... Um, Robin Island Museum Memorial Lecture, which gives us another opportunity to revisit the island and uh, what it's meant in the history of South Africa. A history that is a story of people, many of which gave so much of themselves for the liberation of this country. And one of those people remembered today is uh, struggle icon Walter Sisulu. Uh, this year's memorial lecture will be focusing on uh, his life, uh, his contributions, and uh, will be delivered under the theme, uh, Walter Susulu, the Enabler, a Political and Fatherly Portrait. Uh, his is a remarkable story, as you'll hear, um, and we'll get a sen more of a sense of uh, when the lecture is delivered. Uh, but it's a story of servant leadership, personal sacrifice for the greater good, uh, the story of a man who was an inspiration uh, for the people with his own deep, passionate and unswerving dedication uh, to the struggle. But you'll hear a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on when our keynote speaker is uh, introduced to deliver the memorial lecture. Uh, mine really is just to facilitate the program, and uh, we've got a fairly simple one. There's just a few people I will ask to say a few words, and we're blessed to hear also in song uh, the Guguletu tenors. I'll tell you a bit more about them a little bit later. Uh, and then we'll hear from our guest speaker. Again, I'm not going to give too much away, but I've interviewed him on television many times. And um, he's, he's quite a remarkable human being. Um, you'll know him as a lawyer, but I think he's an activist. Um, he's a humanitarian in many senses and uh, an author, speaker, um, sometimes controversial, I don't know. <laughs> but but um, he, I think it, you'll see he's a great choice to be the person to deliver this uh, memorial lecture this evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin, and it's my great pleasure now uh, to ask uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the Robin Island uh, Museum to say a few words of welcome. Uh, please put your hands together for Ms. Abigail Tulan. Very good evening to all, and the view that I have here, up here, uh, you're looking so, so beautiful, and uh, we hope that will really meet your expectations today with uh, what we are here about. Let me first start by acknowledging the following. The Sisulu family, led by Ms. Lindiwe Sisulu, Vuyelo uh, Sisulu, Jongumzi Sisulu, Jason Sisulu, Zueletu Mavumbe, Nomachule Marata, and our keynote speaker, as he has been introduced, Advocate Tembega Nugaidobi. The program director, Mr. Peter Ndoro, Mr. James Ilden, the CEO of Education Africa. 
the RIM chairperson, Professor Seth Cooper, the council members, the RIM executive, management and all staff members that are here, uh, the association of ex-political prisoners and their newly elected uh, leadership, Professor Andre Odendal, the former director of Robben Island Museum, Professor Njabulo Ndebele, the chairperson of the South African Heritage Resources Agency, Dr. Mpatwa, and the CEO of SARA Advocates, Advocate Malhas, Dr. Vuyani Boy CEO, uh, from Nelson Mandela Museum, CEO of Nelson Mandela Museum, Ms. Mafa Soko, Director of Rwande Museum, who's also with us, uh, Ms. Sizagele Shonwe, the Chief Director within DSEC, which is the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, and also the departments that are with us here, Department of Justice, Labor, Correctional Services, Military Veterans, all sister museums that I've not mentioned, and also all higher institutions that are here. It is a great honor to welcome you to the 20, 2023 Robben Island Museum Memorial Lecture, which seeks to honor Ndade Walter Sisulu the enabler, a political, a fatherly portrait. For those attending our lectures for the first time, a series of memorial lectures were first introduced in 2018. In keeping up with RIM's uh, national agenda or national mandate of preserving and promoting the South African heritage, and key to that mandate is paying tribute to the fallen heroes and heroines of the political struggle against apartheid. The first 2018 lecture became the main vehicle for the museum in celebrating the centenary of Mr. Nelson Mandela. The 2018 lecture was then followed by the 2019 Memorial Lecture, which was dedicated to Mr. Governor Mbeki, who was the accused number three in the Rivonia trial. And the lecture was themed Govan Mbeki, the political philanthropist. The 2020 lecture, which followed the 2019 lecture, was in honor of Mr. Robert Sobukwe, themed Remember Africa, and the 2021 lecture was in honor of Mr. Jafta Masemula, themed The Tiger of Azania. The 2022 lecture, which was the recent lecture that we had, took a slightly different approach, which was a shift to reflect on the different historical layers directly associated with this iconic site, which is Robben Island. And not only to South Africa, but the African continent and the world, shining the spotlight on lessons to be learned from diseases that have plagued mankind over the ages, drawing the parallels between leprosy and the coronavirus. As a symbol of lifelong learning, RIM through the Public Heritage Education Department has a mandate to tell the stories of the multi-layered history of Robben Island, and more specifically, to honor the many incredible human beings who carved a pathway in the journey to get South Africa to freedom. Therefore, Without taking over the role of the different and yet very powerful speakers that we have here tonight, allow me to also be counted among those who continue to bear witness to the teachings and the philosophy of this great giant that we are honoring today. Reflecting on the life, teachings, sacrifices, and strategic impact of Ndadisi Sulu truly brings a lamp in, uh, to one's throat, and one is left with nothing but deep admiration and respect for the leader who sought not to be placed on a pedestal in the forefront, but led side by side in the trenches and even from behind. I just want to quote uh, in his uh, biography, uh, a quote directly by George Hauser and Herbert Shaw, uh, that says, and this was in the biography, I will go sing, uh, 
open quote, to speak of Walter Sisulu as one of the giants of South African history is not to indulge in a cliche, but a rather a, a simple and a direct statement of fact. His life and the struggle for freedom in South Africa are inter intimately intertwined. Allow me to also uh, continue uh, to honor uh, as much as we have the speakers here today. He was a close comrade of Mr. Nelson Rolisata Mandela throughout most of his life. But I think what is important is <clears throat> the journey that they took to make sure that we have a free country. And one could say that today, we, got, we again find ourselves at a crucial point in our country's continued journey to ult ultimately having a prosperous nation. South Africa continues to be on this challenging journey, and through our work at Robben Island Museum, we hope to remind not only our leaders, but our citizens of where it began and where it was envisaged to go. Welcome to the 2023 Robben Island Museum Memorial Lecture on Ndate Walter Max Uliate Sisulu, the enabler, a political and a fatherly portrait, and hope you enjoy your evening. Right, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, um, I think the best place to start an evening like this is with the starters. So the starters are served and whilst uh, the starters are on your plates and uh, you're eating them, I'm going to invite the Google Letter Tenors to, to join us and uh, sing. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later. Suffice to say that they've been together now, I think in this current formation for more than 15 years and they really are a joy uh, to this province and uh, Guguletu Township in particular. So, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy your starters and welcome the Guguletu Tennis.
expropriations of the colonial encounter, the development of black intellectual thought, constitution making and land disposition. He is currently working on a new book on the show Trials of Empire. He is a member of the South African Law Reform Commission. He is the Chancellor uh, at the Water Sisulu University. He holds a BPROC and a degree from the University of Transkei, which is known as UNITRA. He also graduated from Rhodes University with a Master's of Law. In addition, he also holds a Master's of Law from the London School of Economics. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Advocate Tembeka Mugaito. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to have been invited by the uh, museum. And you obviously could have done better, but, uh, but uh, here I am, uh, standing. Uh, sorry, I, I put this in my pocket, so I now need to straighten it so that I can be able to read it. Thank you. Much has been written about Walter Sassoulou. He was born in Enmo in the former Transcan on 18 May 1912. He was raised by his grandmother until the age of six when he went to stay with his mother. He would rise to become one of the most recognizable faces of the 20th century in South Africa. His father, Mr. Dickinson, was a white assistant magistrate. His mother was Alice Manset Sisulu, the daughter of Abraham Moyiwa Sisulu. He had a sister, Rosabella. They were both raised by their mother as their white father had apparently abandoned the family and played no part in the appraisal of their children. Although water could be classified as colored, he in fact was raised in the tradition of the Tosa speaking people of the Eastern Cape. And as an African, taking on the clan of Amatri, or Tamela, or Nanash, or Malabedin, or Nogwinda, or Chokomapa, or Malabayende, Adikusha. While his formal education was elementary, his wisdom, experience, and knowledge of the world was expansive. He had been a worker in a factory, a worker in a mine, a property agent, and a political activist. In fact, it was Walter Sassoulou who introduced and recruited Nelson Mandela to the ANC in the 1940s. Walter Sassoulou had become a member of the Communist Party of South Africa because from his perspective, there was no contradiction between African nationalism in the ANC and being a communist in the CPSA, as it was then known. 